adaptations in plants. Plants are found in all parts of the earth. There are millions of varieties of plants growing in different types of climatic conditions. The specific geographical location within which a species of plant grows and flourishes in nature is called its habitat. For example, lotus grows in muddy water while rose grows on land. Plant habitat can be of two types. Terrestrial habitat. Land habitat is known as terrestrial habitat. Some types of terrestrial habitats are mountains, deserts, plains, etc. Aquatic habitat. Water habitat is known as aquatic habitat. Fresh water and marine water are the two aquatic habitats. Adaptations Have you ever wondered why does a cactus plant have thorns while a pea plant doesn't? The reason behind the difference in the features of these plants is that they grow in different set of climatic conditions. The changes or modifications which a plant undergoes to survive in a particular geographical or climatic condition are called adaptations. The modifications help in increasing the chances of survival of the specific plant variety. Adaptations are determined by several factors like rainfall, temperature, humidity, terrain, soil type, etc. Amazing fact! Eucalyptus trees are well adapted to survive forest fires. Their seeds germinate when triggered by the heat of the fire. Terrestrial plants Terrestrial plants are the plants that grow on land. They can be found in plains, mountains, deserts, coastal areas and marshy areas and swamps. Sunflower, rose, banyan, orchids and banana are all terrestrial plants. Terrestrial plants are further divided as shown. Plants that grow in plains. Plains are the lowlands with relatively level surface, stretching over a vast geographical area. The climate in the plains remains warm during the summers and cold during the winters. The trees have a number of branches which bear innumerable leaves. The leaves on the trees are so arranged that they can absorb the maximum sunlight for photosynthesis. In the places which receive less rainfall, the trees shed their leaves once in a year to minimize loss of water. Such trees are known as deciduous trees. Most of the trees on the earth are of the deciduous type. People, mango, gulmohar and banyan are examples of deciduous trees. There are also places on the earth that receive heavy rainfall. The trees in such regions do not shed their leaves and remain green throughout the year. That is why they are known as evergreen trees. For example, guava, sal, rubber and jackfruit. No more. The giant redwood trees are the tallest trees in the world. Their height helps them to gain adequate sunlight for photosynthesis. Plants that grow on hills and mountains The land on hills and mountains is of the sloping type. They are at a higher elevation than the plains. It is due to this reason that these places have low temperature accompanied by strong winds. The trees found on hills and mountains are canopy shaped so that snow cannot accumulate on them during snowfall. The thick bark of stem and presence of seeds inside cones are adaptations to protect from the extreme cold. The leaves are needle shaped with thick waxy surfaces to reduce water loss. The evergreen nature of the trees helps them to prepare food throughout the year. Pine, spruce, oak and maple are the trees that grow in mountains. Plants that grow in deserts. Deserts are the regions that have scarcity of water due to low rainfall. Cactus, prickly pear, 
babool, date palm, etc. are the main plants that grow in deserts. They have developed modifications to withstand the extremely hot and dry weather. Desert plants mostly grow around natural water resources or at the places where underground water is present. The roots spread over long distances to fetch water for the plants. Succulents are a special type of plant which can store large volumes of water. Aloe vera is a succulent plant having spongy leaves with stored water inside. The leaf surfaces of desert plants are coated by a waxy layer to prevent water loss by evaporation. Some plants also become dormant to survive in the dry weather. Cactus plants have highly reduced leaves present in the form of spines. This helps in decreasing their exposed surface area for evaporation. Their stem is green containing chlorophyll to carry out photosynthesis. No more. Some cactus plants bloom at night time because they are pollinated by nocturnal animals. Plants that grow in coastal areas. Coastal areas have abundance of saline water. The weather is cool and moist. Trees like coconut and palm grow there. They are of the evergreen type and do not have to shed their leaves throughout the year. The stems of the trees are strong and flexible to hold off strong winds. Plants that grow in marshes and swamps. Marshes and swamps are the waterlogged lowlands. The soil is rich in nutrients but lacks air supply. The plants growing in marshes have resistant and sturdy stem to provide rotting from excess of moisture. The roots, known as breathing roots or aerial roots, grow above the soil to absorb air from the atmosphere. The mangrove trees are best adapted to survive in the marshes. Aquatic plants Aquatic plants are the plants that grow in water. They may be found in fresh water or marine water. Water chestnut, lotus, water hyacinth and water lily are some of the aquatic plants. There are many types of aquatic plants. Floating plants Floating plants grow on the surface of the water. They are not rooted to the floor of the water body. Their roots keep hanging below the surface and absorb water and minerals from their surroundings. The leaves of floating plants are wide and have special air sacs at cellular level to help them stay afloat in water. Their stems are also hollow to keep the plant lightweight. Examples of floating plants are duckweed and water hyacinth. No more. Water hyacinth is the fastest growing aquatic weed. Its growth suffocates all life forms that live in water. Submerged plants Submerged plants live underwater. Their roots are fixated to the soil bed. The leaves of these plants are flat and ribbon-like and the stems are also flexible. This helps the plants to move along with the water current. The leaves do not have stomata. The plants breathe through general body surface. Hydrilla, pondweed and tape grass are the examples of submerged aquatic plants. Fixed plants Fixed plants, also known as emerged plants, have their roots fixed to the soil of the pond while their leaves float on the surface. Their stems grow long so that the leaves and flowers are born on the surface of the water. They are also hollow strong and flexible to withstand the water current. Lotus and water lily are examples of fixed aquatic plants. Insectivorous plants Insectivorous plants are an interesting group of carnivorous plants. They grow in places where the soil lacks nitrogen and other minerals. They capture and feed on small insects and flies. Each variety of insectivorous plants 
has a special mechanism for trapping insects. They are generally brightly colored and produce nectar and scent to attract their prey. In Venus flytrap, the leaves are modified into hinged traps with highly sensitive hair on the edges. As soon as an insect lands on the leaf, the trap closes and the hair prevent it from escaping. The plant releases digestive juices to break down the prey and absorb all the necessary nutrients. In pitcher plant, the leaves are modified into a deep, vessel-like structure with a lid on top. The insects are attracted by its bright color and the nectar it produces. The rim of the pitcher is sticky to capture the prey. At the base, there are chemicals secreted to digest and release the nutrients from the body of the insect. Non-green plants There are also certain plants in nature which differ from the basic properties of their class. Some of the plants are non-green, that is, they do not bear chlorophyll. Such plants cannot prepare their food by photosynthesis. Non-green plants are of two types. No more. Rafflesia is the largest flower in the world. It has no roots, stem or leaves and lives as a parasite. Saprophytic plants These are the non-green plants which derive nutrition from the dead and decaying bodies of plants and animals. Fungi like mushroom are saprophytic in nature. Parasitic plants These plants derive nutrition from other plants. They have modified roots which help them to stick to their host and suck nutrition from them. Indian pipe, corpse flower and daughter plant are parasitic in nature. Adaptations for self-defense from enemies Some plants have also developed adaptations to protect themselves from being eaten by predators. Spines and thorns Some plants have pointed projections called spines or thorns to deter the predators from eating them. They are formed by the modification of the leaves or stem. Cactus, cotton, baboon and rose are some plants that have spines for defense. Chemicals and poisons Some plants are capable of releasing chemicals in the form of sap, which ruins their taste for the herbivores. Poison ivy, foxglove and castor are some plants which are poisonous to their enemies. Touch response Plants like mimosa or touch-me-not are sensitive to touch. As soon as an animal touches it, its leaves close and droop down. The plant looks dead and the predator does not eat it. After a while, the leaves regain their original position.